On this month's edition of the FIFA World Cup magazine, the stars align at the final draw in Moscow. We remember the original poster boy, the black spider Lev Yashin. And we meet Russia's prolific comeback kid, Alexander Kokorin. But first to Moscow, where the city-state Kremlin Palace played host to the final draw for the 2018 FIFA World Cup. First held in 1930, three days before the start of the inaugural World Cup tournament, the final draw has grown over the years, becoming a show of spectacle and wonder. This year's edition looks set to be no different as preparations were in full swing in the week leading up to the main event itself. Months in the planning, the draw attracted the great and the good of world football, many of whom would be draw assistants, while former England international and the top scorer at the 1986 finals, Gary Lineker, would host the draw itself. Now yeah, the World Cup's, for me, the biggest sporting event in the world. It's always one of the exciting moments of, of any World Cup is the draw, see who you're going to be playing, whereabouts in the host nation that you'll be playing. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. 31 teams will join the hosts, Russia, in the 21st edition of the FIFA World Cup Finals, and we'll have all the news and reaction from the draw itself later in the programme. With the eyes of the football world on Moscow for the final draw, the week preceding it saw the unveiling of the 2018 FIFA World Cup official poster. Held at the Krasnaya Preznaya Metro Depot, the event was attended by a number of dignitaries and members of the press. Designed by renowned artist Igor Gurevich and incorporating key aspects of the host nation's cultural and sporting identity, the 2018 poster pays homage to one of the greats of Russian football, Lev Yashin. Nobody can compare to him. Lev Yashin and the fame and popularity he enjoyed is unrivaled. Everyone in football today knows his name. He was a unique man in so many ways. Despite his fantastic popularity, he was a down-to-earth person, simple and modest. Even after all these years, this is how I remember him, how he stays in my memory. He was a man who was revered like a saint. Born in Moscow in 1929, Yashin was a one-club man, having played his entire career for Dynamo. He was part of four Soviet Union World Cup squads, appearing in three, beginning with the 1958 tournament in Sweden. We were so calm and relaxed when he was in goal. He had a presence that resonated. When the Soviet Union national team was being selected, people would ask, who should be the first name on the list? The answer was always the same. Lev Yashin. Why? Because when he was in goal, you knew the defence would be solid. I admired him because when it came to Yashin, everyone talked about this great goalkeeper. The 1958 finals were the first time I had the opportunity to play against him. They were a good team. They were a team that demanded respect. And one of the main reasons for that was because they had a good goalkeeper in Yashin. Winner of Olympic gold at the 1956 Games, Yashin was part of the Soviet Union team that lifted the inaugural European Championship in 1960 and helped revolutionize the role of a goalkeeper. Yashin owned his area. He occupied a range of positions in the box. 
He gathered highballs both inside the six-yard box and around the penalty spot, which prevented his opponents from heading the ball. This wasn't common at the time. He was among the first keepers to punch the ball, and he used to look to throw the ball out as quickly as possible. This was to accelerate our team's attack. Such was his talent, he won the 1963 Ballon d'Or, the only keeper to lift the prestigious award, and was named goalkeeper of the tournament at the 1966 FIFA World Cup. This was certainly a great achievement for the Soviet Union and our football. This was our Soviet goalkeeper being recognized as the best in the world. He truly deserved his accolade. A goalkeeper who plays with a surety and self-belief generates confidence amongst his defenders, which in turn transfers to the team's forwards. Yashin passed away at the age of 60 in 1990, but his influence lives on. Murals and statues of him adorn football stadiums and buildings across Moscow, while Dinamo's new arena is due to bear his name once it's completed in 2018. There's even the Yashin Club, a list of Russian and Soviet keepers who've kept over 100 clean sheets in their career. To be top of this list makes me happy. Maybe in a hundred years' time, people will still recall Lev Yashin and how good a player he was. Maybe football back then was different, and some will say there were better keepers. But not in my opinion. I believe he was the greatest goalkeeper of all time. Lev Yashin's appearance on the official poster not only looks set to be one of the 2018 final's defining images, but it offers a new generation of fans the opportunity to learn about the man affectionately known as the Black Spider. The first World Cup that I watched in full was in 2006. I was supporting France, Thierry Henry and Zidane with all my heart. I like these players a lot and therefore for me it was hugely upsetting when France lost in the final to Italy. Along with Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp is one of my favourite players of all time. Although neither of them still play now, their magic and their goals still inspire me, even ten years later. Daria Isayeva is a 21-year-old Moscow-based artist whose passion for the beautiful game and the FIFA World Cup has made its way from the pitch to the page. Art for me is an expression of my love for football. I simply love football and everything is expressed through my art. All of my drawings are a part of me, as an artist and as a fan. All of them in some way reflect my journey and my progress, both creatively and personally. Sometimes I hear back from the players I've drawn, mainly the Russian players, like Fedor Smolov and Sergei Ignaseyevich. They have written to me saying they liked the drawings. The next six months will be an exciting time in Russia as we get set to host the World Cup. I remember when we won the right to host it a few years back. I was sat with my brother waiting for the results to be announced, thinking, will it be us? I would like to do an exhibition for the World Cup. But for now I'm working on an exhibition on Arsenal players because I've finished the drawings. If it goes well and I feel inspired, then I will do my best to draw every player at the upcoming World Cup.
As part of the activity surrounding the final draw, each of the 11 host cities had displays promoting themselves. Along with providing information pertaining to their preparations, they invited a number of their ambassadors and local football fans to help showcase the excitement that everyone in the city is experiencing ahead of the kickoff in June. The draw is certainly a very important event for all the host cities, including Samara, because this is when we find out which teams will be coming to our city. Samara is eagerly waiting for the fans of the teams that will play there, and I know the anticipation is growing as the World Cup approaches. It's an important football event and a historic moment for Russia. I'm very happy that Samara will host the tournament. What can fans expect from our city? As a former player, I can say that watching football in Samara is unforgettable. You only have to experience it for a few moments to realize that this city lives for football. We're very happy to be a host city. We're looking forward to welcoming the teams to our city, to showing people from other countries how beautiful Nizhny Novgorod is. I want to tell them to explore our city centre, to visit the embankment and check out Minin Square. This is where the fan zone will be located next year. It's where you'll be able to watch games if you don't have a ticket for the stadium. When it comes to the success of the tournament, I don't think we should compare it to previous editions. Every World Cup offers something new. What I really want is for every game, in every stadium, in every city to be full. I want the fans to show their passion for their team, regardless of whether they're the favourites or the underdogs. Football is my favourite sport. I love it. I try to attend as many games as possible for Oral, the national team, any team really. It's my passion. Everyone is proud that our city will host matches at this amazing event. I visited the stadium where the games will be played, and it certainly makes an impression. It's amazing. I like it a lot. Everyone is looking forward to watching the World Cup and arouse home fixtures at this wonderful arena. It really has everyone very excited. I think this is part of the beauty of football, bringing people together. It unites people from different backgrounds, nationalities and occupations. We're ready and looking forward to welcoming everyone. Sixteen months has been too long. I've missed it. What can I say? I'd like to think that I've changed for the better. Perhaps now I've got a little more experience. I've really been looking forward to being back in the setup, to pulling on the national team shirt again, because it's been an unpleasant period in my life, and I've missed this. In just under six months' time, Russia will host the 2018 FIFA World Cup, and one player looking to make an impression for the hosts is Alexander Kokorin. Once hailed as the next big thing in Russian football, the 26-year-old's career has often fluctuated between highs and lows. The forward began his career in Lokomotiv Moscow's youth setup before joining city rivals Dynamo, where he first crossed paths with Russia's current head coach, Stanislav Cherchesov. He made his Premier League debut for the White Blues in 2008 at the age of 17 and within minutes had set the club record for the youngest goalscorer. 
Not many players have managed to make their debut at such a young age. I was competing with older and more well-known players, which made it difficult. But to be able to come on and play with them as equals was great. I'd like to think it was a successful debut. In 2014, three years after making his international debut, Kokorin was part of the Russian team that qualified for the 2014 FIFA World Cup in Brazil. It's probably the dream of every young boy or teenager who plays football. To play for your national team is the ultimate honor. To play for my country in major tournaments like the World Cup and the Champions League are the realization of a goal I set myself when I was growing up. It's what I've been striving for, working towards. Since then, the subsequent years have been challenging for Kokorin. Poor performances for Sbornaya and off-field antics meant he fell out of favor. This season, though, he's been a different player, both on and off the pitch. Now a regular for Zenit, having joined the St. Petersburg club in January 2016, Kokorin is thriving under the guidance of former Manchester City head coach Roberto Mancini. Credit has to go to the coach. He's very composed and balanced. He's helped a lot with my game, talking to me and explaining what he expects of me on the pitch. His support has really helped me improve my game. For me, Zenit are the strongest team in the country at the moment. To play for them brings me a lot of pleasure and happiness. So far this season, the number nine has scored 18 goals in 28 appearances, form which has earned him a recall to the national team. Having started three of Russia's four recent friendlies, Kokorin looks to be re-establishing himself as a major part of the national team setup as his country gets ready to host the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Russia is a big country and we are ready to welcome the entire world. The tournament will be a challenge for us. We need to prove that at home, in front of our own fans, we can play good football and achieve good results. It will be magnificent. To be a part of and play in a home World Cup will be something incredible. And so to the State Kremlin Palace and the final draw where some of the biggest names in world football gathered to see who they would face in the group stage at next year's FIFA World Cup. The draw is a major milestone for us. It's taking place in a very high-profile venue, the Kremlin. It's a special place. It's our homeland's heart. The draw is getting attention from all over the world and from everyone who loves football. With the watching audience being treated to a variety of performances celebrating Russia's unique culture, the man given the honor of presenting the FIFA World Cup trophy on stage was Miroslav Klose, a member of the triumphant German team in 2014. Klose is the all-time leading goalscorer at the finals with 16 goals. It's a great honour for me, and it's fantastic to hold the cup in my hands once again. It's always something very special. For the draw itself, legends of the game, including a number of former World Cup winners, took to the stage. Amongst them was France's Laurent Blanc, who lifted the FIFA World Cup on home soil. When you've won the World Cup, it changes quite a number of things. It changes your life as a footballer. And it changes the way people look at you. When your career is over, you're invited to the draw. And you are part of this football family. You're also part of a smaller footballing family, which includes the people who've won the World Cup. Following the introductions, the draw got underway. Russia. 
Host Russia were drawn against Saudi Arabia in the opening game of the tournament, which will be played at Moscow's Luzhniki Stadium on June the 14th. Completing the lineup in Group A are Egypt and Uruguay. Every opponent will be better than the one before. The first match is against the Pot 4 team, the second against Pot 3, and our last game is against the team from Pot 2. The draw provided some intriguing match-ups with the European champions Portugal drawing 2010 World Cup winners Spain in Group B. España. Joining the Iberian neighbours in the group will be Morocco and Iran. Portugal is in with a chance in every game. We can beat anyone. We know that the opening game against Spain is really important because we've got two very difficult opponents after that. We shouldn't forget that both Morocco and Iran finished their qualifying campaigns without conceding many goals. In Group C, top seeds France were drawn against Australia, Peru and Denmark. Group D saw Argentina and Nigeria drawn together for the fifth time in seven World Cups, joining Croatia and deputants Iceland. Their first ever game at the finals will be against the South Americans in Moscow on June the 16th. When you think about the World Cup, you think about Argentina and Brazil, so it's a little bit romantic uh, feeling to, to play Argentina in the first game, but of course we know how, how good they are. Iceland are a very strong team. They're physical and they're organised. Croatia are a talented team. And we will also face an unpredictable team in Nigeria who can hurt you at any moment. In Group E, five-time winners Brazil were drawn against Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. Reigning champions Germany were drawn against Mexico, Sweden and Korea Republic in Group F as they seek to become the first team to retain the trophy since Brazil in 1962. We want to make a significant impact in the World Cup. It begins with the opening games. You have to be in top form for four weeks. The players have to work hard. We want to go a long way. We are amongst the favourites and we want to live up to that billing. Panama. Group G saw the other World Cup deputants at the 2018 finals Panama drawn against Belgium, Tunisia and England. And in Group H, Poland will meet Senegal, Colombia and Japan. And finally, just to wish your all representatives here of the various teams that will play next summer, we just want to wish you all the very best. Good luck and thank you. Now the teams know who they'll face in the group stages, attention will turn to picking final squads for the tournament itself in June.